Hey, what you doing? Come here. Yeah. Sit. Sit. That was different. Put your hand in the box. Okay. I hold it to your neck, the ganja bar, a poison needle. Instant death. I think it's actually a clay sculpting tool. The test is simple. Remove your hand from the box, and you die. That seems a little extreme. What's in the box? Pain. Is it candy? I think it's candy. An animal caught in a net will gnaw its own leg off to escape. What will you do? I think I'll just wait here until you get tired of holding that thing at my neck. Fear is the mind killer. Hey, you think we should show folks how to make one of these candy boxes? Because I think they would really... That's coming up. What's up, you awesome geeks? I'm Brian, and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is venturing out of the desert of Tatooine, and with a little help of the spice, making our way to the sands of Dune. That's right, with the release of Denny Villeneuve's, and boy, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, his version of Dune just released, and we have an entire new world of props and costumes to explore. Now, let me tell you, I am a huge fan of this film. And while watching, one particular prop or object caught my eye, and that's the agony box, or the pain box, if you will. It's a beautifully crafted object and a great piece of propage that I would love to have in my collection. So I figured with the tools I have and the little bit of knowledge, I could maybe pull off a similar box. So let's get to it. Now this prop is entirely started by modeling it in 3D, in Fusion 3D, and then printing it on my resin printer. I just bought a new AnyCubic Photon Mono X that has a large enough build plate just for the size of this particular prop. I used a lot of the reference images I found online and a little bit of the information from the actual book on its size to get it as close as I thought I could. And one thing I did specifically is I modeled the box so that it was perfect little squares or rectangles. I didn't want any blemishes to be in it on the 3D model because I figured it would be really enjoyable to take this box and completely weather it by hand. Adding the battle damage is one thing, but let me tell you, I am the luckiest man on the planet. Not just because my lovely wife works alongside me, edits all of our episodes, and lets me occupy nearly every weekend building something ridiculous in the shop, but she's also excellent with color. This box has a lot of variations of color, and I think she did well enough to even make the Fremen proud. Have the lights on. Now you can really see the color. I've got a blue, an aqua, and a verde goblin. What I'm trying to do is create layers as I go. Coloring each brick, treating them as individual pieces.
The only thing at this point left to do is give this box a bit of depth by adding some dry brushing of a lighter color to some of the high spots. I also added just a tad of water mixable oil paint to some of the deep recess areas and to help blend in slightly and grime up some of the corners. This is one of those projects I have been really proud of. I went outside of my comfort zone a lot on this one. I spent a good amount of time with the 3D model, tried my best to get the sizing right, gave my best shot with the battle damage to help tell the story, and I love what Carissa was able to do with the color matching. I've never really tried to replicate something like this on the fly. Now it may not be perfect, but the journey to get here really was. And I don't care what the Benny Gesserit witches say, this thing, it's full of candy. We really hope you enjoyed the build this week, geeks, and we appreciate each and every one of you that continues to watch and support us. A special thanks goes out to all the awesome members of the Smugglers Guild, and now we want you to get outside of your comfort zone and build something out of nothing. I want to hear more Roy Kent out of you. Hey, Roy Kent. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. No, it was fine. It just, you were laughing. It was oh. hilarious. You started laughing before I did. Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Kent. <laughs>